Hello, teacher Jackie here. I wanted to have like a two part series. Part one today is about parents, the parents of your students. And this is the, um, the kind that aren't, you know, they're just not going to uh, appreciate or respect your classroom. We are VIP kid, independent contracted teachers, and therefore we have our own style, our own method, our own flair, and our own culture in our own little video classrooms here. I have explained many times in my classes that this is one-on-one -on -one tutoring, that this is not the formal classroom. This is not the education classroom. I don't always explain this. I just do when I kind of stop the class and find something that we really need to work on with the student. There is obviously reading, writing, speaking, listening, and um, one more <laughs> with English. And therefore, I am learning now, too. This is a little side tip I'm adding to this video, is that ask the student what their goal is, especially for those of us who are teaching higher levels. Or if you're teaching a lower level with a student, with a parent, say, what is your goal? What do you want this class to be? I've been really impressed and surprised when I hear the students say, well, I want to speak better. I want to read better when I think their reading is fine. So I try to listen for other ways to improve their reading so they can sound more native English. I just taught a class and the student said, oh, every time there was an S, an and, or a the, not a the, something else. So I was correcting that, but that actually wasn't his goal. He was okay as long as he was understood. Of course, to me, it drove me crazy. All right, so back to this one. This was a particular class I had recently where a parent was right there with the student. Most of the times, the parents are great. Sometimes the parents are not because they're very disruptive in class and um, they kind of want to teach it. Now, I used to have the thought process that, hey, you're paying us, you know, you can sit there and make sure your student sits still or make sure your student is answering the question. Or if they don't understand us a few things, you may need to tell them in Chinese what we're saying. I get that. And you are very helpful and you are increasing the success of their English learning. Otherwise, there are the parents that read the slides that basically instruct. And the worst mistake of all, they're teaching the incorrect pronunciation of a word. <laughs> have you heard it yet? Maybe you have, and if you haven't, it's going to drive you crazy. You know, like the word kind, they may say kind, and you're like kind, and they're saying kind, and then their student says kind. And you say, hi mom, hi dad. Thank you for supporting your student. I think, you know, it's great that you're here. You're increasing their success. Between classes, you can support their English practice in class. Let the student and let me and the student or whatever, let us, you know, teach the class, interact the class. And actually, mom, it's kind, you know, you go through that little process. So to extend on this recent class, the mom was right there and she kept telling the student things. And I was like, mom, you know, thank you for being there. You are, we love you. You know, you are increasing success for your student. And um, right now, you know, I basically wanted her daughter to listen to me. I forget what I said. It sounded better than what I'm trying to do right now. And I thought, wow, I've nailed it. Because there are student parents that hear that and they, oh, yeah, you're right. You know, maybe I can go do some work while you teach or tutor my student. So throughout this class, I was correcting the student. I was having her repeat what I said. And I'm trying to think of the exact, there was one specific time. Anyway, I thought, I felt support from the mom through the class because she stopped talking and we me and the student and I could interact and continue with our class successfully so right about you know a few minutes left we're at the very last slide 
I ask questions what they will do after class to test and, and help them with future tense. What will you do after class? And usually they'll say, I will, you know, go to sleep or I will brush my teeth or I will go eat or we'll go play. And we were there and we were great. And I said, you know, thank you for class and, um, you know, see you next time. Bye-bye. And the mom got up and I could tell right then and there she was not on board. She said, okay, goodbye. You know, like, and she couldn't click close or stop or end fast enough. So I was like, oh, she didn't get it or it wasn't, you know, and I did it as what I thought as respectful as I possibly could. I thought, well, okay, maybe she's frustrated the student or me or the class or just didn't meet her expectations. And that's what we want to do. We want to meet the parents' expectations. So even though we have our expectations or our classroom and our culture, um, we still should try to meet in the middle. But I will say, as a teacher for, I don't know, about five years or so, um, you still want to stand firm in who you are, how you teach, in your classroom, virtual or in person, as long as you're doing things well and right within standards and, and representing the product and curriculum well. So I thought everything was dandy. Good. You're probably thinking I got a four apple or three apple or two. I did not so far. I have not gotten a bad review from her, but what happened? My phone just went boop, boop, boop. It blew up. She canceled any future classes with me <laughs> yeah right so I didn't see that coming um but in a way I was like you know what she did me and her a favor you know that's fine and you know it's one of those things that things should or shouldn't go so please be encouraged that if it happens to you it's okay it's probably a blessing in disguise and then maybe later she'll come back and go you know what the teacher was pretty good and my daughter's not doing so well because I've let parents know that in here they can make mistakes in here I'm here to correct their pronunciation and reading and whatever it may be in speaking so when they go to class they can be the best student at their school does that make sense hopefully this gives you a little bit different mindset to look at how to deal with parents and or how to look at your classroom and or to look at how your role is in this whole thing. I know I've had to evolve and look at it this way and I couldn't say anything but positive things about how um, this has all come out for me. But there are those parents that are difficult or demanding or just different, all the D words. And so I just wanted to, again, encourage you as a fellow teacher, future teacher, or maybe even a past teacher about, again, parent type number one, the difficult parent. And um, just know that, you know, hopefully you're doing your best or sometimes we need to grow. Sometimes we need to change or we need to improve. So you have to weigh that out. All right, that's it. Thank you so much for being here. Again, like, subscribe, share, comment. So I know what you're looking for to be encouraged or for any answers or just again, to grow our community back up again because it's back and it's exciting. Talk to you later. Happy teaching. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.